the uh, the individuals were receiving support uh, from Al Qaeda elements located in Iran. Now I can tell you uh, that there is no information uh, to indicate that uh, these attacks were state sponsored. Those comments from yesterday's news conference surprised an awful lot of people. Al Qaeda and Iran aren't two names that many people put together. They would seem to be at odds, but not our next guest. He says there is an ongoing relationship. Ahmed Majidjar is with the American Enterprise Institute, joins us from Washington today. Uh, thanks for joining us today, sir. Uh, th this is an issue that you've been looking at for some time, and, and I understand you say I shouldn't be so surprised. No, indeed, I'm not surprised by uh, any connection of uh, the recent uh, uh, plot in Canada uh, going back to Iran, because there has been uh, some ties between Iran and Al-Qaeda going back all the way to the end of 2001, when the United States toppled the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Many senior uh, commanders of Al-Qaeda, including some family members of Osama bin Laden, uh, traveled to Iran. Initially, Iran put uh, these uh, commanders under house arrest, but later on uh, uh, eased some of those restrictions, and that's why we see more activity from the Al-Qaeda cells inside Iran. But in the past, uh, the Al-Qaeda cells in Iran have mostly uh, been involved in facilitation uh, of fighters and also weapons from the Middle East into Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, but this recent, attack, uh, recent plot, if, if proven that it was directed and supported, as Canadian officials say, by al-Qaeda elements in Iran, shows a new escalation, uh, not just by al-Qaeda, uh, by, by al-Qaeda uh, cells inside Iran. As of now, we don't know if there was any support uh, or knowledge of the attack by the Iranian government. Uh, but I think that regardless of that, the Iranian government should be held accountable for harboring and tolerating these senior al-Qaeda operatives on its soil. Uh, given the stance of Prime Minister Stephen Harper towards the Ahmadinejad regime over the last few years, I, I think there's a bit of a competition going on between Canada and the U.S. and, and who uh, they happen to hate the most at the moment. So there's no love lost between Canada and Iran. But Iran's foreign minister laughed out loud when asked about this. Now, this is according to uh, an outfit associated with uh, the official uh, government news agency. So you take that with a grain of salt, obviously. But he says, oh, anybody that knows anything should know this wouldn't happen. Are these connections to Iran? Absolutely. Are, are they loose or are they direct connections into the regime in Tehran? Yes, you're right that the Iranian officials have rejected any connections to the plot and also uh, uh, they have also rejected any existence of al-Qaeda fighters inside Iran. But we know that uh, many senior al-Qaeda uh, commanders, including their senior military strategist, uh, Saif al-Adil, has been in, uh, living in Iran for uh, quite many years. And uh, the Iranian officials, of course, know about that. And of course, publicly, the Iranian government will not acknowledge any connections with al-Qaeda. But I believe that the reason that Iran is tolerating and sometimes supporting al-Qaeda elements inside its territory is for two reasons. First of all, it's an act of defense because uh, al-Qaeda and Iran, uh, they are ideologically uh, enemies of each other. Iran is a Shia state and al-Qaeda is a very extremist Sunni uh, group. Uh, so by harboring and uh, having these uh, top al-Qaeda commanders on its soil, uh, it's uh, discouraging al-Qaeda to uh, commit any uh, terrorist acts on its soil. And secondly, it also uses these, the presence of these al-Qaeda elements on its soil as a bargaining chip against the West, that in case if there is any attack on Iran by Israel or the United States, the message that Tehran is sending uh, to the West is that it will, uh, th the response will involve I will use these uh, al-Qaeda elements against the West. I understand that there have been, at times, as you say, an uneasy relationship, and from some reading that uh, Osama bin Laden early on looked to uh, have meetings in Iran with Iran's uh, state-sponsored agency. I mean, Iran, it's well known, sponsors Hezbollah in, in Lebanon, uh, and that he wanted to find out some of their secrets, uh, how they ran truck bombs, for instance. If there is... A, you know, more of this coming together, and you mentioned the Sunni-Shia split, and then you've got the Muslim Brotherhood government in Egypt uh, re-establishing ties with Iran. These are not necessarily forces of, uh, of light and good in the world. 
Does it make it more dangerous if you've got Hezbollah, the Ahmadinejad regime, Al-Qaeda, Mohammed Morsi, all coming together and maybe they've got differences, but they're willing to say, the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Absolutely, I agree with you on that, because there is, of course, divide between the Sunnis and Shias. There has been the sectarian differences uh, between them for millennia. But the, the, problem, uh, the issue here is, as you mentioned, that the enemy of enemy is just my friends. And it's not just with al-Qaeda. A lot of analysts talk about uh, just uh, uh, that, that any connection between uh, the Sunni al-Qaeda and the Shia Iran is impossible. But if we look uh, at the history of uh, Iranian state sponsorship of terrorism, we see that Iranians have uh, assisted many other radical Sunni groups uh, against the United States or for its own uh, geopolitical uh, goals in different parts of the world. One of the examples is Hamas, Hamas against Israel. Hamas is also a Sunni group. Yeah. Uh, another example is the Taliban in Afghanistan, which is also an affiliate of uh, al-Qaeda, but it's also supporting the Taliban against the government of President Karzai and also against the United States there. So it's not quite unusual that uh, Iran as a Shia state is still supporting uh, these radical Sunni groups uh, to achieve its goal against the West. Uh, what, what is the end game here uh, in terms of these groups coming together? Uh, uh, we know that al-Qaeda says they want the return of the caliphate. We know that some others are, are, say they're working f towards that. Uh, this is their goal. I don't see Iran as part of that. Maybe I'm wrong. Is, is this all part of the, their bizarre dreams? I think that uh, it is very dangerous time. Uh, the attack, if, uh, it was, uh, it, if it was successful in Canada, of course it would have amounted to uh, massive, uh, massive casualties there. And also, this attack happened right after uh, this plot was discovered right after uh, the uh, bomb, uh, terrorist bombings in Boston. Here, although the officials have found no connection between the two uh, uh, attacks in Boston and also in Canada, but the fact that they happened just next to each other uh, shows that uh, the Al Qaeda threat is still there, and uh, uh, and the Obama administration's assertion that Al Qaeda has been decimated and does not uh, pose any serious threat to the West, uh, Western countries is not valid. All right. Ahmed Majidjar is with the American Enterprise Institute, joins us from Washington. Thanks so much for walking us through this, sir.